This is the Emergency Medical Minute. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. All right. Welcome to your evening medical minute. Some of you will wonder how we can top the gripping tale of hyperbilirubinemia that we discussed yesterday. <laughs> but today we have a tale of a femur fracture. At one of your local level one trauma centers, there was a patient with a femur fracture. And the femur fracture could have looked like this, but it didn't, it actually looked like this. So the story was, this was a young 20 something male who had a past medical history remarkable for IV drug use, who was just walking along minding his own business when his femur went snap. And uh, he was seen at an outside trauma center and then eventually transferred here to uh, our trauma center for further orthopedic evaluation. So any clues from that history that this might be a pathological fracture and not a simple traumatic fracture? his mechanism of injury, right? Not normal to just be walking in your house and your femur snaps. So what I want to talk about for just a brief minute was kind of how can you tell the difference uh, on an x-ray between uh, just a traumatic fracture and a pathologic fracture. So if you look at this one, uh, you can see, and, and you can come over to my computer and I'll show you better, that we've got a nice thick cortex all the way down and we've got really sharp edges to the two the fracture site right there. You really, you know, you could draw with a Sharpie the lines that delineate the fracture. But if we look at this second x-ray right here, what are some of the differences that you notice? Jagged. You notice a difference? Yeah, so this looks what you would call, or a radiologist might call moth-eaten or lytic at the top of this, uh, at the top of this fracture site. And then if you look, the periosteum is the very thin tissue layer that kind of lines the top of the bone and will sometimes peel away. You can actually see that peeling away along the side of the fracture there. It's very subtle, but you can come and take a look at that. So those would be kind of two classic manifestations that, in fact, there was an underlying lesion before his femur ever broke that caused him to be predisposed to having a femur fracture. So what, what kinds of lesions, I mean, what do, what do we need to watch out for on Rick that he's not just walking around one day and his femur snaps uh, while he's walking through the ER? What, what kinds of things could cause this? Cancer. So cancer, yeah. So if you have a primary bone tumor like an osteosarcoma, that could certainly cause it. And that's on the differential diagnosis for this young guy. Sometimes younger patients will get bone tumors. They can also get benign kind of non-malignant bone cysts that would cause it as well. Or in an older patient, they might have a malignancy from something else like their breast cancer or colon cancer. Anything else that might predispose them? Infectious, Infectious yes. So that's suspected to be the cause in this patient. Interestingly, he had, I don't really know the details, but he had been to an outside hospital a week before complaining of vague knee pain, and they thought maybe he had a little cellulitis, put him on some Keflex. In fact, he probably has underlying osteomyelitis related to his IV drug use. When he was taken care of in the OR, they actually sent a bone for culture, did a gram stain. There were some bacteria on the gram stain. So osteomyelitis is highly suspected, and they'll probably need a prolonged course of at least six, uh, six weeks of antibiotics with a PICC line. All right, any other diseases we need to think about? Osteogenesis imperfecta. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Mr. Glass from the movie, uh, what was it? I can't remember. Unbreakable or Unbroken or something like that from a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, perhaps editors, you can add in some sort of link to that. Uh, and then there are other kind of bone-related diseases. Paget's disease is kind of a, a disorder of uh, disorganized cortical bone that becomes weak. Uh, or you can have things like multiple myeloma, some of the blood dyscrasias uh, that uh, older patients will start to break down some of their bone. So anyway, if the story doesn't seem to fit with trauma, and if you see these weird uh, x-ray findings, then you should think pathological fracture and the patient might need referral to an, uh, more of a specialized orthopedist who's comfortable taking care of this sort of thing, which is why the patient was transferred from an outside trauma center to us. Because we do everything. Yeah.
All right. All right, thanks. Hello, EMM listeners. We are dedicated to providing you with high-quality educational content free of charge and without ads. As a nonprofit organization, we rely solely on donations. So if you enjoy our show and are able to make a one-time or recurring donation to help cover our operational costs, any amount is helpful in making this show possible. Click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you.